I just I think it's cool because you, you get to say like I worked with NASA someday this project could actually be on the ISS. You get to work on things that are gonna change people's lives. How many high school students get to say that they built something for NASA? It's really cool because it's experiential. You actually get get out there and not just absorb knowledge, but you actually get to practice knowledge. The best thing about it is that this is real life. You can't get any more real than this. Hunch is a partnership that we have with the NASA program. Uh, Hunch stands for High School Students United with NASA to create hardware. The uh, NASA group has given us the opportunity to develop some experiments and testing them out on ultimately the zero-g plane. They're engaged in real life projects. By getting the actual hands-on experience, it, you just you can't learn a better way than that. The students are working for NASA. Their ideas are things that NASA's said they'd like to see. Their aim is to get this experiment up to the ISS, which is, is wonderful. I really like working towards that goal of getting into space. I'm really excited more about the project and see how it will su succeed. Right now, astronauts they do not have anything to cook their food. Crack an egg and cook an egg. The idea to start it that simply. It's what does it take? What does it take to get the egg out of the shell? What does it take at that point to get it from there to something where we can cook it? Um, what happens when you cook it? Does it behave the same as it does here? The egg cracker experiment is to successfully extract the egg, uh, an egg, raw egg, out of a shell and be able to put it into a plate. We put an egg right in here, and it cracks it by um, pushing the egg down into these blades. It's going to do that while it's spinning to sort of recreate a flicking action. And the plate is being inserted into our egg cooker that the students designed. A high, low, and double dense. Okay. So it makes different cross patterns. And with that, we're going to try to successfully cook a raw egg to medium over medium or uh, sunny side up, one of the, we want something along those lines. So right now I'm working with the Adreno to fully control the egg cooker. So uh, what it does is right now it's taking temperatures from six sensors and then what the Adreno can do is take those temperature readings and then either make it hotter or make it cooler. And uh, so far we've been super successful but you just got to keep practicing and practicing and practicing with the uh, cooking of the egg. Really good. <laughs> The biggest player is, of course, Warren Tech. Uh, we also have Lakewood on board. You know, we work closely together, the, the Lakewood High School students and the Warren Tech students. The teacher, Matt Brown, goes between the two schools, so we have some really good resources and shared abilities along that line. Uh, my name is Matthew Brown. I work at Lakewood, Lakewood High School in the Hunch program. The experiments these kids are doing is related to the need for plants in space. So they're developing a plant chamber to grow vegetables or plants, flowers, whatever they want to in, in space. I mean, gravity, <laughs> or lack of gravity, is a huge challenge. Water acts differently, so and we deal with a lot of water. You know, how that acts in, in space is very different than how it acts here on Earth, and that's driven a lot of their designs. There are two spots for plants in this chamber, and the third hole will be filled with vortex so that air can be let in, but water won't be let out. It's removable. It can be replaced if the plants are to die on the International Space Station. We've tied it with aquaponics so that we can use natural nutrients from fish. So that now they have fish as well up there, something living, uh, an animal of, of sorts for them to take care of. This is pretty much our water tank and fish tank for both our running systems. So this is what provides the water and Using an aquaponic system of nutrients from the plants will come to the fish that are in here, and the fish will have waste and they'll provide nutrients for the, for, for the plants. From this class, I've learned how to grow plants out of poop. <laughs> That's poop. <laughs> Another big challenge for me in this is trying to teach students that this isn't just some theoretical project. They're actually an employee of NASA, and we've got to adhere to their deadlines, and we've got to meet their expectations. Eventually this project will actually be a real-world thing that is used on the ISS to help astronauts have a better life. 
the, the students are putting all this effort into these projects that they know will go somewhere. Somebody will use the experiences down the line. So that's basically what we've been working on is designing and building and testing this, this plant chamber for the ISS. The students who are working on building the zero gravity experiments, those students get to fly in zero G and we'll go down to Houston. The trip in Houston went very good. There was a lot of success in the uh, project with the flight, and it was a lot of fun as well. When we first arrived, we went to Ellington Airfield. We kind of got acclimated, we got badged, we got oriented. But don't get sucked into a jet engine that's bad also. They were pretty strict. I mean, it's definitely like a NASA government place, so they had us check out all the tools and make sure that we were like actually working and not just messing around. NASA's expectations were to uh, make sure that we were uh, flight ready and uh, to see that our project was a success. The students work with the NASA engineers, with Hutch Coordinator, Flo Gold, and various other people who, that uh, volunteer from the local community around us. We got to tell everybody about our project, show our safety rec uh, requirements, and, and make sure that we were ready to fly. We worked to make sure that all the systems were going to run and came up with backup systems in case it broke on the first flight and we needed to change it before the second flight, which was good. And the reason we're doing this is that um, we need to see if these, if these devices that we've built are, are going to work in zero-G. There was a lot of process we had to go through from getting our flight suits to the medication, from setting up to the egg, and then making sure everything worked before flight. Then we took it on the flight and tested everything, and that was pretty exciting because our teardrop shape worked. Well, I'm hopeful that the experiment will work, but you never know if something could go wrong. I guess we'll find out on the flight. I think it's going to go pretty well. We're all set to go, and just hopefully it'll work out. There's this Boeing 727 that's been outfitted to, to do this. They've taken out all the seats and padded the inside. And then the plane flies out over the Gulf of Mexico and they do 30 parabolas like this. And in the, from, from about here to about here, uh, the, it's zero G. Zero G, it was amazing, honestly. Being weightless, you get that sense of flying, and you know, if you're flying, you feel free. I, it was pretty cool to be weightless. It was like being in a swimming pool without all the water. The experience of being in zero G is, is phenomenal. There are more people who have been to the top of Mount Everest than have actually flown in zero G. On the zero gravity flight for the majority of the parabolas, they wanted us working hard, and then the last few we got to play. Definitely a big factor in the project. Overall, the fact that we cooked two eggs, the first group to ever do that, and zero gravity, we consider our project. This year was a success. The experiment turned out really well. We were able to cook two eggs and also crack four eggs in zero gravity successfully. And this is the first year we got to see the fish tank work, so I think it was a huge success to get everything working and we made people notice us because our project really stood out. The students are amazing. Uh, there's really no other way to explain it. Something that just a bunch of high school students created could eventually make it into space I think is a cool idea. You know, when you're, when you're studying a, a, out, of a, out of a textbook, you're not really doing something that somebody later on is going to use. I think that's that's just unparalleled in, in education right now. It's an amazing opportunity. I don't think I could be doing anything better with my time.